everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Judy and you are watching Running So and So and thank you once again for returning to join me or watch me for the first time on one of my vlogs. My vlogs are just about my life and sewing. I've sewn for a very long time. I started sewing when I was four and I'm 63 this year. So it's quite a long time. So I do hope you enjoy what you watch with me today. I want to say thank you to everybody that's newly subscribed liked, commented or watched one of my videos lately. I am so pleased. Thank you so much. It means the world to me. And I'd like to say thank you to Sue for the lovely gift of a coffee. That was really unexpected. Thank you so very, very much. Now, today I am over the moon to be finally able to do my makes review for the second quarter of 2024. And there are two reasons why I have not done this yet. The first being the Sew 7 Together reveal. That reveal was into the third quarter and some of the garments that I made for the reveal I'd actually made in the second quarter, not the third quarter. So I had those, but I knew there was a pattern release coming up. And the pattern is the lovely new Rydell jumpsuit from Isoso Patterns and I was honoured to be a first and second round pattern tester again for the lovely Izzy, who is the mastermind behind Isoso Studio. Um, I've been involved with Isoso Studio since Izzy did her first Zoom call so along back in August 2020 during the pandemic and it has been an absolute pleasure to watch Iz Izzy grow as a pattern designer. And let's show you the jumpsuit, ta-da! Now, I have yet, I have pictures of me in the jumpsuit, but I have yet to actually take this picture that you're seeing now. So when you see, I've done it. So it's got the most lovely shaped neckline, and unlike the Sirocco jumpsuit, the jumpsuit here has been done in a contrasting jersey fabric. It doesn't have an elasticated waist, it has a drawstring waist so you can let it in and out to your heart's content so if you wear it and it fits nicely and you go out for a meal and you've eaten a little too much you can just loosen it and she's got two she's used eyelets i used simple buttonholes for mine i used buttonholes and then i've just used an ordinary tape that would go around the neck of a, a hoodie I love the jumpsuit. I've made the short version. You can make it short. You can make it whatever length you want, really. I mean, I've done a short length. You could make it below the knee. You could make it sort of ballerina length. You could make it full length. There are the options to pockets at the back and pockets as well in the waist. I'm not a pocket person. I don't like pockets. I would rather not have a pocket. It's not that I don't like making pockets. It's just that if I can miss them out, I will do because I feel that pockets are there. I, for one, me, this is all about me, puts things in pockets and pulls the garments out of shape and I just don't like doing that. And the fabric I used for this was one from the Beyond the Pink Door box that we got from Andrea, oh, probably a couple of years ago now. And I didn't know what to make it in it. And I just think, kept thinking, oh, what shall I do, what shall I do? And then when this jumpsuit came up and it needed a lovely soft viscose jersey, I thought this is just the make for that particular fabric. So, let's now open the fabric book and see where we got to. So let's move on with the review of the second quarter. Now the first thing I did was I altered a pair of braces for um, a colleague of my son-in-law. The brace stitching on the back of his braces had come up on the leather, so I just needed to go back through the holes on that. But Henry thought I'd done a fantastic job. He's still going on about me mending his braces. We watched the football last weekend and he still was going on about it then. And I've done some, I did some work for my lovely ladies in the village. I altered some dresses for um, Nancy and one was Nancy and I can't put a picture in it because I just don't have it. But she had this stunning silk crepe de chine dress which had been made by her sister, by N Nancy's sister made it for her for Nancy's daughter's wedding. Uh, goodness me, it must be 40 years ago, and she wanted to wear this cerise pink dress to the Royal Maundy service on Maundy Thursday, and it was in Worcester Cathedral this year, and Nancy was honoured 
with the Royal Normandy, which present, was presented to her by Queen Camilla. And Ian, her husband, managed to go with her and they had the most fantastic day. So it was a huge honour for myself to be asked to just take up the hem of this silk crepe machine dress, which I did do by hand. The first thing I made in the second quarter was a beautiful Easter rumper for Oliver using a lovely brindle and twig pattern and some stunning Easter egg fabric, which I managed to acquire from Little Legs Fabric. From there, I moved straight on. I was going to start some other sewing. I had a dress to make for a wedding. I got a phone call from the brother. Please, can you put some embroidery on a t-shirt? I've decided to go to the Eclipse next week. Can you just put some embroidery on it? So here you go. Here's a picture of the shirt that I embroidered for my brother, which was um, was quite a challenge because I had to sort of put the machine, the embroidery inside. If I've got any footage of the machine embroidering, I will put it in. I might have to harvest it from somewhere, but I'll do my best. And my brother absolutely loved it. He said just to get a polo shirt that with some embroidery on it about the eclipse was just going to cost him silly money. So could his sister do it? So the next thing that I made was my wonderful, wonderful Seasons of East Autumn in New York dress using the Balenciaga fabric that Hannah and Michael had bought me for Christmas in 2022 when they visited Mood Fabrics in New York. Um, these photos that I'm just going to put in here were taken by a wedding photographer when I wore the dress to Melanie's daughter's wedding. So if you got married in April and I wore the dress and I just said to the lady, oh, the wedding photographer, you could just snap some pictures of me wearing it. I am going to do a full review on this dress and it will be coming out in August. I need to do it before I go to Oregon because it's going to form part of a series of vlogs for the afternoon tea event being run by Mel Keen. And I can't remember who the ladies are doing it, but I am doing this as a review. And then I made a very sparkly picture of it here. True Bias Marlowe cardigan in some wonderful sparkly fabric that I picked up from Manjit in Lucky Fashions in Dewsbury. Going through my book next, I made a blue lycra version of the Rydell jumpsuit first time round, not showing it to you because it just does not look like that at all now. And after that, the next was my very first Skyline tee, which was made using some fabric from Joann's. And I used that fabric for it because I wasn't quite certain how the fit and everything would work on me. And I made the version with a little balloon sleeve. And again, as I mentioned before, I like the higher neck version. From there, I went straight on to making the cream coloured one, which I love just as much. And that's the one with the cat sleeves. And I have now made two more versions of that since then. From there, we move on to my Sew Seven Together projects. And the next two outfits I'm going to, items I'm going to talk about, form and outfits. And the outfit is my beautiful grape coloured free range slacks with a Remy Raglan top to go with it. That is made in a viscose from Atelier Brunette. A little, it's not the Dobby viscose, it was a different viscose. It has a funky weave inside it. Let me see if I can hold my book up. Can you see it there in my the pattern? So what I'm doing is I've just got a little bullet journal and, and apart from the stash hub, I also write in here as well. Then I've got my uh, fabric above there for my pattern test for Izzy. It's the one I thought I saw Robins in. I need to move forward a little bit. Don't run out of space in my book. From there, I went on to make another Sew so House 7 outfit featuring the free range slacks in some lovely ochre coloured linen that I bought from I think I might have got it from Jenny Stitches, but I really cannot remember. And then I used my lovely lemon fabric that we received in a Beyond the Pink Door box, I think about a year ago. And that also doubled up as part of the So Fruity Challenge that was run by Yvette from Blossom Sandwich. And as you can see, I've taken the pictures in the garden, 
but the two just complement each other so beautifully and it's a lovely fresh uh, outfit to wear. I also made the Sorvi dress as part of the Sew 7 Together Challenge. So Sam, Mandy and I all made a Sorvi dress and we used Abby on the pink door fabric that we received from Andrea in April of this year. And I had one that was green with a great big piece of striking pink on it. And I'm sure you'd agree that the three of us look fantastic together. Now I did make a little alteration to the Sorvi dress. I have very little in the chest department. So the straps here, I had to lift the straps by approximately two centimetres, which, so I just pulled the strap down slightly at the back. And it's very easy to do it because if you pop the strap in and leave the top stitching, you can actually fiddle around with it. You can even turn it through, stitch it down, and then you can take it out again afterwards. Now the next thing I've got here is I've got two dresses that I started to make. I started to make my Mississippi Avenue dress and I started to make my Montevilla dress, both by Sew House 7 in the second quarter. But I'm not going to talk about those today. I'm going to talk about those in the third quarter because neither of them are finished. That is just a very, very quick roundup of everything I've made in the second quarter of 2024. Now I look in my book and I think I've done absolutely loads. And I suppose I have done more than I think I've done because I'm not, I am not showing you my first version of the Rydell jumpsuit because obviously it's not one that I've, um, I'm going to be wearing because it is very much a test garment but it's just a little review so that when I get to the end of the year, I can think, just how many garments have I made this year? So I'm just going to sit here and count them up. So there you are, I've made 13 garments, 14 if I include the alterations that I did for Nancy, um, especially one of them was a complete remake, but I obviously, as I say, I don't have a picture of that. Um, I'm not a fast sewer, but I seem to have done an awful lot, which, um, which is a bit of a shock for me because I don't usually sew that quickly. I don't know how I've managed to make 13 things, but I suppose three months is about 13 weeks. So I should give myself a pat on the back and a round of applause and be proud of myself for doing that. Moving forward in the next few weeks, I am going, as I say, it's the school holidays, we're breaking this weekend. Um, and I know parents up and down the country are going to say, oh, it's the holidays, we've got this to do. But believe me, we teaching staff and support staff need our batteries recharging so that we can support your children to the best of our abilities come September. But it's going to be a bit frantic because I've still got loads of clothes to make. I have got cut out here. I've got two dresses to finish. I've got the Mississippi Avenue dress to finish, the Montevilla dress to finish. I've an Ogden cami and a pair of Pietra shorts to make. I have a Sorvi that I'm desperate to make in the beautiful Hawaiian inspired fabric from Andrea in the last pink door box. And, 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 and I am desperate to cut out the oxbow pants from So House 7. I have got some fabric on my island to the side here and I am going to twirl around the waist. Because if you're twirling trousers and you've got pinch points that you know could be a bit tricky, you need to just cover those pinch points. So for me, I just want to check my waist, my hips, and the top of my legs to make certain that they will fit nicely on me and do up comfortably. And I've got the movement to sit, stand up and sit down in them. And I am actually going to the Isoso Studio Social this weekend with a good sewing friend. And the pair of us are going to make the oxbow pants and we are going to twirl them up together. So we've got to try and get them cut out before we get there on Saturday. So if I've got them twirled, getting them made after that should be okay. But I've got some more alterations to do for Nancy, which I haven't done yet. I've got them all prepped to the side of me. So maybe I'll get those done soon. So for now, I hope you're all well. 
thank you so much for staying with me and watching my video and I'll see you all again very soon. Take care and lots of love.